It's uh, been a little while, I guess, since the midterms. So everything's kind of the dust is settling, I think. Maybe we can just do kind of a recap tonight and, uh, and move on to bigger and better things. I think there's a lot, as they say, a lot to unpack because it wasn't all bad. Um, they want us to think it was all bad, but they're forgetting one major part of the midterms. And I really want to talk about this tonight. And that is that the folks who stood with the unborn, stood with families, stood with patriotism, were outspokenly against uh, the branch Covidians, won big. They won huge. And we're going to talk about that because nobody else wants to talk about it. Here in Minnesota, just like out in Pennsylvania, in Minnesota here, it's pretty much idiocracy. If you have one bucket that holds two gallons and another bucket that holds five gallons, how many buckets do you have? Two? Thank you. They went out last Tuesday and they actually voted for the people who let this happen to the city a year and a half ago. But in their brainwashed delusion, the folks in the cities, the, the cities of St. Paul and Minneapolis, are now bragging how they beat us. They beat the conservative. They beat the big red wave in the midterms. But that, that's like bragging that your cancer is spreading faster than mine. Yeah, you're right, but it's not going to end well. You see, the thing is, friends, we've seen this, traditional Catholics, we've seen this coming a long time ago. Started homeschooling our kids 20 years ago. Got the heck out of the city 25 years ago. I grew up in the cities. We got, we got out because they're becoming uninhabitable since they drove Christ out. Over Minneapolis, as I've pointed out many times, they celebrate every year Abortion Providers Appreciation Day. <laughs> you know? That's why that city went up in, 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 in flames. So we left long, long time ago. So it's their city, in other words, that's in flames. The blue voters. They're the ones suffering the highest spikes in violent crime in history. They're the ones who are getting carjacked in broad daylight. Their children are getting gunned down in the streets. They're the ones falling asleep to the sounds of gunfire and sirens every single night. You see, we didn't vote in a personal sense. We didn't vote to better our situation because we're dodging bullets. No, we didn't as conservatives. There's no crime where I live. We voted to stop the violence in their streets because we care about the common good of everyone. We voted for law and order in their schools. As I say, our children have been homeschooled all along from the start. We voted to protect their grandchildren from abortion, from being aborted. <laughs> we don't want their kids to die, you see? This is happening, this video I'm going to put on the screen, this is happening to their 14-year-old daughters on the way home from school. Not ours. It's incredible. Some kid trying to get home from school and this is going on. And that's mild. At least she lived. At least she survived. And the administrations of all these cities, Democrat-run cities, progressive cities, were, were all voted back in. So you tell me again, who were the winners in those midterms? The folks for, who voted for more of the same? And then they say, well, yeah, but you guys thought there was going to be a, a big red wave. Well, I guess, I guess we showed you. No, you didn't. We didn't expect a big red wave. Let's just think about these midterms. Remember when they were talking about the big red wave that was coming and we were just going to obliterate those Democrats come November, right? Looks like the wave has crested somewhere far out to sea. Want to know why there was no red wave? It's because most of our guys, the good guys, they still do not realize what we're up against. We are up against a fanatical religious cult. So it's not like I'm quick to jump to the conclusion that spiritual warfare is at work. I just had no other explanation. Like, what's the other explanation? There isn't one. So yes, we're watching a battle between good and evil that playing out in spaces that we cannot see because it is a spiritual war, Amen. not just a human war. Talking about evil, talking about the existence of evil in our world 
is getting a lot easier to do because there aren't any other alternatives to what we are seeing. So the question is, I hear that Mitch McConnell is going to be the leader, once again, of the conservatives. He's not conservative. He conserves nothing, but he's going to be the leader of the conservatives. How long before these guys come to realize what this is? As Tucker Carlson just admitted, it's a spiritual war. How long, what's it going to take? What is it going to take for these guys to realize this? Does Trump realize this? Did Donald Trump realize this? There was a time a few years ago where it seemed like he was beginning to get an inkling. Does he still have it? People say you're going to support Trump? I don't know. It depends. It depends. We're not sycophants. It depends on this question. It depends on what Donald Trump does with respect to the life movement, abortion, gay marriage, vaccines. Where is Trump on all of this? You know, we're going to find out. Did he learn from these midterms that were up against evil incarnate? <laughs> he and, <laughs> sorry to say, Donald, but you're the one who endorsed the insufferable Dr. Oz. And Dr. Oz went out there and lost to Uncle Fester over here because Dr. Oz is a Muslim and he's weak on abortion. Well, Uncle Fester, on the other hand, is a zealous defender of that human sacrifice. I'm proud of what we ran on. Protecting a woman's right to choose. Now, Dr. Oz, he might be a decent guy, I don't know. But he brought a knife to a gunfight, didn't he? And he got beat by Uncle Fester. And the thing is, whoever runs in 2024 to become president of this country had better get this right. This is a race against evil. It's a race against baby killers, for heaven's sakes. You say, oh man, you shouldn't use the word evil. That sounds so paranoid. It sounds so kind of weird, right? What do you call baby killers? What, what would you do if I had a baby lying here on this desk? And all of a sudden, I pulled a knife out of the drawer here and just started plunging it into the heart of the baby. Can you imagine any circumstance whereby you would not conclude that I was evil for doing this to a little crying, helpless baby, right? Well, that's what they're doing. But for some reason, we're insulated or we're blind to the reality of this. That is what we are up against. People who want to do that a million times a year just in this country. And over and over and over again, I mean, we, did, we talked about this in, on this show, uh, lead up to the midterms, what was Biden telling you guys? What was he saying? Joe Biden was out there constantly. Remember I was saying, I was on Twitter, you know, kind of, kind of trolling him. Every day there'd be another tweet. He was telling us exactly what this election was all about, but you didn't believe him. Remember, this is what he was saying. If you care about the right to choose, then you got to vote. That's why in these midterm elections are so critical, elect more Democratic senators to the United States Senate and more Democrats to keep control of the House of Representatives. And folks, if we do that, here's the promise I make to you and the American people. The first bill that I will send to the Congress will be to codify Roe v. Wade. There's your, your Catholic president. The first bill he's going to send is going to codify Roe v. Wade. It was all about that. All about that. People say, no, it's Trump, man. Trump backed this. Trump backed that. It was his fault. Really? No, it was all about abortion. And to whatever extent these candidates were weak on the life issues, they got their lower spinal extremities handed to them. Conversely, whomever took Biden seriously, I know it's hard because he doesn't make a lot of sense, but on the abortion thing, he's as serious as a heart attack and very articulate. He wants to kill them babies, man. He's going to protect your right. Come on, man. That's what we're going to do. So whoever took him seriously on this, they won big time in those midterms. For example... So in South Dakota today, uh, we had a trigger law in place that our state statute said that uh, abortion would be outlawed in our state as soon as this decision was made, except to save the life of the mother. So currently in South Dakota today, that's where we are. We want Oklahoma to be the most pro-life state in the country. Uh, we want to outlaw abortion. The new law now making it a felony to perform an abortion at any point in a known pregnancy, punishable by up to 10 years in prison. Millions of children lose their right to life every year because of abortion. In Texas, we work to save 
those lives. Now we're not we're not hearing a lot about those guys. Those are big winners. They had their little red wave. There was a little red wave among these governors who were pro life. And Governor DeSantis, of course, that's the big story of the night because you could not ignore the fact that Florida went completely red, probably for the rest of our lifetimes. I mean, it's so it's it's, it's such a huge a huge switch. I guess DeSantis was the biggest winner of them all. And here's how the governor approached re-election. Florida has joined a growing list of states that want abortion laws to be more restrictive. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a bill into law yesterday banning abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. There are no exemptions for rape, incest, or human trafficking. Now, you would think that if the Republicans are right, Mitch McConnell is right, and we need to talk about the pocketbook issues and not the moral social issues. <laughs> if those guys are right, DeSantis, Noam Stitt, all these guys should have gotten destroyed, right? But instead they won big and nobody's talking about it. Nobody's talking about Christy Noam out there also wanting her state to be the most, they're having a competition, the most pro-life states in the union. <laughs> and DeSantis is like, you know, um, God's back in Florida. Remember I, I put, we played the clip last time. He says, put on the armor of God and go to war against these people. Just weeks before the election, he's talking about God and guess what? He's talking about the efficacy